When most lawyers talk about arbitration, they are talking about a type of alternative dispute resolution mechanism by which usually private commercial parties agree in some written contract that they shall resolve their disputes, not in the courts, but before an arbitral tribunal appointed by them or under the rules of an arbitral body uh, that they have agreed to. And the tribunal sits like a court, but in private. It has confidential decisions that are not published. And the results, of course, only bind the parties to that arbitration. They don't make law or have any precedential value. That is what we usually mean by arbitration. But as well as being the preferred mechanism for the resolution of many international commercial disputes, arbitration is the main way in which most sports disputes are now determined. And arbitration in sport poses particular unique challenges, meaning it has had to develop into a kind of hybrid, discarding many of the clothes that most consider essential to arbitration. So first of all, why does sport choose arbitration? It can often be more speedy and cost efficient than the courts. The decisions are usually final with no appeal. The arbitrators can be specialist in sport and it's usually in private. Sport, like many other industries, doesn't want its dirty linen washed in public. The highest sports court in the world, the Court of Arbitration for Sport in Lausanne, is itself an arbitral body subject to arbitration law. And many sports, like football, make it mandatory for all disputes to be in arbitration because, for example, they may be concerned about interference by different national courts. Football, for example, has a system of universal mandatory arbitration required by the highest body in that sport, FIFA. Article 59.2 of its statutes prohibit recourse to national courts. And Article 59.3 requires every national football association to include in their rules a prohibition on recourse to national courts, requiring them also to impose sanctions on any participant who breaches that rule. That means that national football associate associations have had to develop arbitral tribunals to deal with all the disputes arising in football. So in England, for example, FA Rule K requires that all disputes between participants in football, like clubs, agents, directors and players, are subject to mandatory arbitration under the rules set out in that FA Rule K, subject to certain exceptions. Those main exceptions are where the parties have already agreed to some other mandatory football arbitration to resolve their dispute. So again, in England, for example, a dispute between clubs competing in the Premier League will first be subject to mandatory arbitration under the Premier League rules, a dispute between clubs in the EFL to the rules there and so on. A dispute between a club and a player, for example, over termination or bonus payments in the Football League is subject to the jurisdiction of what's called the Player Related Dispute Commission, PRDC. And a dispute between a Premier League club and a manager to the Premier League Managers Arbitration Tribunal and so on. Mandatory arbitration exists in a growing number of other sports too, such as boxing and Formula One, to take just two examples. And increasingly, the tendency in sport is to have all disputes resolved in arbitration. If you are instructed in a sports dispute case, often the very first thing you should check is which forum should this dispute be determined in? Is it in the courts? Or is it subject to a, a mandatory arbitration? And if so, which arbitral tribunal? Starting in the wrong forum can waste considerable time and costs and might lead in some circumstances to your client losing the opportunity to bring their claim altogether. Whereas in the normal commercial world, one looks at the contract between the parties to find an, an, to find an unambiguous written agreement to arbitrate. In sport, that agreement is usually found in the sports governing body's rules, which are essentially the contract between the participant and the sports governing body. And in some cases, like with the Premier League rules, for example, constitute a contract also between each participant with each other, which is another very important point to check. Sport becomes further complicated here 
because there are most commonly two types of dispute that arise. On the one hand, there are regulatory disputes where the regulator is a party bringing a disciplinary charge against a participant. Think of your classic doping case or a case brought by the FA against an agent for breaking rules relating to agents. But those are disciplinary cases, and in some cases they are determined by what is called an internal discipline, disciplinary process, which is not an un arbitration under the uh, 1996 Arbitration Act. That is the case, for example, with all FA disciplinary disputes. Whereas in other cases, such as disciplinary disputes between the English Football League and a club or the Premier League and a club, they are governed by rules saying they are arbitrations. Uh, and whether or not they are arbitration subject to the Act is, of course, very important to things like the rights to costs, rights to appeal and the statutory right to challenge decisions in the court. On the other hand, you have normal private disputes, for example, between a club and a player or between two agents over commission, uh, most of which, again, will be subject to mandatory arbitration. But it depends. If you think about a dispute between a club and a commercial sponsor that will usually not be subject to mandatory football arbitration because the sponsor does not usually participate in football under the rules of a sports governing body. So it shall probably be determined by the courts unless the parties otherwise agree. But yet a further complication arises where a club or a player, for example, might want to bring a challenge to a decision of a sports governing body. So not a disciplinary case, but a private law challenge to a private company, such as the Premier League. Since the decision of the English courts in Bradley and the Jockey Club, such challenges are frequently brought on what are essentially public law grounds. But they're determined not by way of judicial review in the court, but by an arbitral tribunal applying the same fundamental approach. But those decisions might consider the, leg the legality or the rationality of a decision taken by a league or the construction of its rules. And those decisions will often affect many other clubs and participants in the sport and be of wider public interest. But because it's subject to arbitration and not the supervision of the courts, unless the parties otherwise agree, and that really means unless the sports governing body agrees because it writes the rules, those decisions will remain confidential. Now, wide variations of approach exist in this regard. The EFL is required under its rules to publish all arbitral decisions where it is a party. So is the AFA. The Premier League, on the other hand, is not permitted to publish any decisions according to its rules. All of this highlights the complexity and problems of arbitration in sport. Arbitration is supposed to be a system of dispute resolution based on consent. But the mandatory requirement to arbitrate in most sports governing body rules means that participants have no real choice at all. It is based on what the German federal courts in the Pechstein litigation described as consent determined by others, or I call forced consent, an oxymoron if ever there was one. Decisions of such arbitrations are often import important to other parties. So they ought to be published. But arbitral law generally provides for strict confidentiality unless the parties otherwise agree. In Pechstein, which involved an athlete's challenge to a forced arbitration clause, depriving her of a public hearing in relation to doping allegations, the European Court of Human Rights found a breach of Article 6 of her convention rights, the right to a fair hearing, which includes the right to a public hearing. That decision has led to certain CAS and FIFA arbitral cases having now to have to be held in public. That's something that most English commercial arbitration lawyers would find difficult to understand. And the decisions of an arbitral body about what a sports governing body's rule means as a matter of construction, for example, will often be of wider interest than only to the parties involved. Other participants should be able to know what the rule means and to be able to rely on decisions, perhaps creating a system of precedence. And it's often likely that other parties will have an interest in a regulatory dispute about the rules or a decision, 
and that they therefore uh, may ought to have a right to intervene in those arbitral proceedings. All of these matters demonstrate why sports arbitration has had to develop a type of special hybrid that exists somewhere between the conventional approach to commercial arbitration and the approach of open justice. In my view, further thought ought to be given to developing a uniform hybrid that properly meets the specific requirements and circumstances of disputes in sport. Mm -hmm.